Hi, this is Jennifer Bell and Lilo back with another video in our series about EMDR related topics. Today, I'm going to talk about dissociation, which simply put is pretty much any time your brain is not where your body is. There are many different types of dissociation. They're on a whole wide spectrum. A mild version that happens to quite a few people is if they're driving or riding in a car and get to where they're going and realize that they don't remember all or part of that trip. There are other, as I said, versions of dissociation, some much more extreme, including dissociative identity disorder or DID, which used to be called multiple personality disorder. People often say that dogs are much better at being in the present moment than people are, and I think that's true. Although, I can tell you with Lilo, her brain is not always where it's supposed to be. For instance, she knows commands like sit, stay, leave it, come, but she can be doing one of those things and doing what she's supposed to do, and then a chipmunk runs by and she's off. Her brain is no longer focused where it was supposed to be. It's not quite dissociation, but it's something along those lines. So you may wonder why I'm talking about dissociation in a series of videos about EMDR. The reason is that if someone is prone to dissociation, it's likely to happen during EMDR processing. This isn't an EMDR deal breaker, but it is helpful to know in advance if it might happen. I often tell my clients that it's important to remember that defenses like dissociation or our inner critic or other things that we wish we didn't do to cope with situations are actually things that we developed when we had no other resources available to us. For instance, with dissociation, it's actually pretty amazing that our brain, if we're in a traumatic situation, can say, I cannot handle what is going on here, I can't be here, or I won't make it. And then all of a sudden, essentially, you're not there. Your mind has gone somewhere else. That's pretty amazing and very helpful at the time. It's only later that coping mechanisms like that can become problematic and we lose our appreciation for them. But I always urge clients to remember that those are all there for a reason. There are parts of our brain that are actually trying to help us even though it is not at all obvious and it's not helpful at the time. Tune in for our next video when we'll talk about EMDR targets.